Hey everybody. Uh, today PRS posted a blog with a thing they're calling the Play at Home Challenge. And what that is is they've put up some backing tracks to play over while everybody's here stuck at home. And um, you can post them, tag PRS. Uh, they'll you know put them on YouTube, uh, wherever you like. Just put up audio clips if you want, video clips. I recorded the backing tracks down here for PRS. They reached out to me about doing this. I'm going to walk through each one um, and explain. Uh, they're not difficult, um, but in case you might want some help uh, running through the chords, whether you want to play some rhythm guitar to them, uh, I'll also explain some ideas of a possible way you could look at soloing a reach. So um, just a little tutorial. This kind of started because um, I started making some backing tracks here, mostly just bass and drums and maybe a, a touch of keys here and there for the product demos that they bring me in to do. And they took one of those. Um, actually, it was the track from this video right here. So that was the demo video that came out very recently for the Silver Sky Maple Neck um, John Mayer guitar that came out, I believe, in January. Um, they took just the bass and drums of, of that track that I made and sent it out to the employees. And that was Play at Home Challenge number one. And they asked me to make some more tracks at home specifically for this. The next thing I asked for was a little funk groove. Fortunately, I'm, I'm blessed to have two amazing young sons um, here in my house that are great drummers. So I dragged them into this and um, my older son Aiden came down and we played this little groove. I'm going to go back and walk you through both of those uh, at the end of the video. Uh, but first and foremost, I want to go through the new songs, what they're calling, uh, I guess, batch three or group three of these songs. Uh, there's actually five different tracks. They wanted a blues track, a country track, uh, a couple different just grooves, and then they wanted something heavy, um, which, you know, if you've watched any of the product demo videos, I don't play a lot of heavy stuff. I like it. It's just, uh, you know, I do my thing. If you're looking for the link for these, there's a PRS blog post that I will put the link in uh, the description of this uh, video. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this somewhere else where it's embedded, uh, click on the video so it opens in YouTube and you'll be able to find the link to the PRS blog where you can download all of these tracks. A few of them, most of them actually have versions with and without rhythm guitar. So if you want to just cut a rhythm guitar track uh, to just bass and drums, you can, or you can play along to my rhythm guitar track. Um, a few of them even have the bass part taken out if you're a bass player and would like to have a go at this. I'm a guitar player hacking through the bass on these. So, you know, come in and put some, lay some real bass down on it. Um, so this first track uh, is a blues in E. Now, I took some liberties with some of the chord progressions here just because of the length of the song, trying to make a song one minute long. I only went through the 12 bar progression one time and at the end it just hangs on the, the E chord, the one chord. So here's the track. So obviously starting on the E chord, the one chord. Walks up to the four chord, up to A. that one chord. So 
Super straightforward. Um, it's a blues, so, you know, pull out your blues tricks. Uh, obviously, you know, E minor pentatonic works great over that. E major pentatonic can work. Uh, the next one is a little country groove in A. Uh, I put the the uh, tempos, the BPM, in each file. So if you're downloading this and you want to put this into your DAW um, and you want to, you know, set it to a grid and chop it up and uh, make it longer, um, you know, feel free. Have at it. Uh, this one's a little thing in A. <laughs> the A chord. Up to D7. Back down to A. Back up to the four chord, the D7. Back to A. That goes B7, B7, two chords, E, E7, back to A, so that one had a little bit of a, a little twist in it, with, so it's basically, it's not a basic 12 bar pattern. Um, I wanted to switch it up just so it wasn't the same thing. Uh, by the way, both of those tunes uh, featured my son Aiden on drums. Basically one take. We, I said, here, play a groove like this, and um, he killed it. That one, the A major pentatonic works great, uh, and a kind of a A minor pentatonic will work, especially kind of like putting a little, putting that third in there. Um, it's almost got kind of a lay down Sally kind of, little vibe to it. Um, I steal everything somehow, subconsciously. So it's like... Um, that's A major pentatonic. A little borrowing a couple little... That little flat seven note. Up to the D chord. That was all kind of A minor pentatonic with a couple notes grabbed out of it. B7. Oh, I'm sorry, it's back to the D. When it goes up to the B7 chord, I, you know, you can, there's so many ways you can approach doing that. If it, right here. That little riff I just played. I'm really just kind of picturing as a riff over a B7 chord. Um, all right, the next track, uh, I believe they just have labeled as Groove. Um, it's a, in the key of C, kind of a laid back groove. Again, Aiden just killed the drum track on this one. Uh, it's really fun to play to, one of my favorite kind of vibes and feels. C major, A minor, F to D minor. But a good way to think about that, it's in the key of C major. It's the one chord to the six chord, and then it's the four chord to the two, but it's the same. Same kind of movement, right? And then there's a little turnaround after I played a couple times. It goes C, G, F, which is the one, five, four, okay? You could C minor pentatonic it. It's not really my favorite sound over this kind of chord change. I like keeping it uh, in the C major pentatonic or actually really playing straight C major scale. So here's C major pentatonic. Right? C major scale. In that same area. Um, I'm going to... I'll stick right in this kind of area. Um, so I'm going to be playing straight out of the C major scale, C, C major pentatonic. And I'll show you real quick how a C minor pentatonic riff might work if you want to pull in like a short um, taste of that. So let's have a listen, and I'll show you kind of an idea that you can uh, play this. You can stay all right inside one key.
it's an acquired taste there. It has its moments. Sometimes grabbing a little bit of it can be cool, but um, I think a lot of guitar players revert to that minor pentatonic as a comfort zone and uh, learning really how to like work a major scale over something like this to me is um, is one of my favorite things to do and favorite things to work with students on. Um, so that one's uh, a great little groove in C. Uh, the next one is a another groove, but this time we went with a uh, a minor groove. This one is again same thing all the way through. G minor, G minor seven, D minor seven, C minor seven. So basically, you know, one five four in uh, in G minor, or you could think of it in key of B flat major, and it's a six three two. However you want to think of it, this one a straight up G minor pentatonic scale is gonna sound great. A full G minor scale. We can use the same shape that we used for that last song and just move it down two frets. Um, and it's gonna work great over this or up an octave. Um, uh, this one happens to be my 14 year old, uh, Julian, my other son, killing the groove on this one on drums. Uh, so let's have a listen to this track, G minor, I think it's just called Minor Groove on the PRS site. The way I'm playing the rhythm. Yeah. There's the G minor. There's that D minor 7. I'm just sliding into chord tones. Again, just a really cool laid back groove, but this time minor instead of the major. Depending on what your tastes are, play over both of them, whatever you like. Uh, and finally, uh, uh, actually real quick, I'm gonna go over the original two before I get to this last one, the heavy one, way out of my typical comfort zone, um, but it was fun. Um, so the, the original two tracks, the very first one that I showed you that little video before of the, um, Silver Sky, Maple. Um, this is the backing track by itself. C minor. And it's basically C minor to F minor. So that backing track is up. That's the very first one. What's interesting, if you watch people playing back to that, that's how I recorded it. And that little Wurlitzer track that's in there actually is not in the backing track they posted. That's in the backing track I made. I think the backing track that uh, they posted is just bass and drums. So this one has no rhythm guitar in it. Um, and so it's really just, just that C note to the F note back and forth. So people played this all kinds of different ways because there wasn't I was hearing it as C minor but you really could have played it all kinds of different ways being that it's without that Wurlitzer track in there that kind of spelled out some chord voicings um, other than some walking notes in the bass uh, there was nothing that really made you play it as minor um, so mess around with that it's C to F play it as minor to minor minor to dominant however you want um, uh, that's the very first one they posted. Uh, Paul played some cool stuff on it. All kinds of employees put it out, and uh, I think uh, I think they actually released that um, to the public at some point. So there's other ones, but now anybody's welcome to go grab it, download it, play over it, and then the funk one. It's being played as a 
E7 and A7. So even though the minor pentatonic will work, um, I like this kind of, instead of E minor pentatonic playing like, playing instead of the flatted third, change it to a third. So I took basically those three notes and moved them up a half step. So it's almost like basically playing this minor pentatonic and just giving it that one major note. Or you can run by the other one. But So I, I play a lot of that kind of stuff and little chromaticisms. You know, add some flavor. Do whatever you want with it. That's just kind of how I approach it. Here's that track. Oh, and I do the same thing when it changes to A. I actually just take that same shape. Move it to A. That's the change to A. It's going to stay on A there. It's going to go back to E. Uh, the little... That's how I'm playing that little rhythm phrase. It's um, I believe when they put those files up, they've got um, uh, the little trio thing there, bass, rhythm guitar, and drums. And I believe there's also versions of that one too with no rhythm guitar. If you want to replace the rhythm guitar or do your own thing, there's one without bass. If you want to, you know, lay down some bass on that, have at it. Now, finally, um, they wanted me to do something heavy. There's a lot of fans of heavy music that are like PRS nuts, and, and I am a fan of it. I just don't play a lot of it, or I haven't in many years. So uh, I often get um, lambasted by some of the, um, the fans of heavier stuff that they're you know, tired of my you know, old guy blues licks <laughs> on all the guitars on the videos. Aiden came down, we made up a little drum groove with some kind of syncopated triplets in the kick drum and different stuff, and I just jammed along to it afterwards for a little bit and made up a riff. I'll show you the riff in a minute, I'll show you the guitar that I played it on, so uh, if you want to learn the riff uh, or variations of it. But if you're looking to solo over it, there's different options. It's in A, it's this kind of A minor-ish kind of thing, but it really is in a harmonic minor mode. Um, so the easiest way to think about this, if, you, if you're familiar with the harmonic minor, the scale that works over great is D harmonic minor. Um, that's one possible shape of it, or... Uh, any shape of D harmonic minor, and obviously there's other ways that you can play to this, uh, but that one works fine, works well over it. I'm going to just stick right in this area and just kind of show you sonically how it sounds. Um, I might do another video where I kind of uh, tear into this one a little bit more, uh, but this is more of an instructional side than anything else. Uh, so here is uh, my, my son and my attempt at a brutal heavy backing track with a vintage drum kit and a semi-hollow baritone with P90s. Uh, brace yourselves. I'm going to start down here, the first position I showed you. Right? Or you can move up to the other position I mentioned.
uh, diminished runs. Works great over that too. I have no idea if you could hear me talking over top of that or not. Uh, what I was saying is that I started in that first position, went in the second position. I was also saying that uh, if you know any diminished arpeggios, they can work over that. All right. So quickly, I'm going to run through how I played the riff uh, or the general idea because it changes uh, subtle variations and uh, a bunch of little hits that I, I were trying to match with what he played on drums. So this is a baritone, uh, strong B to B, where normally the strings would be B, E, a, D, F sharp, and B. But I have this in drop A, so the low B string is tuned down a whole step to A. It would be basically the equivalent of a regular guitar in standard tuning tuned down to drop D, where you lower your E string down to D. This guitar, a typical baritone guitar, is tuned two and a half steps lower than a uh, traditional standard tuned guitar. Um, so in between a bass register and a guitar register. If you don't have a baritone and you want to try this riff, um, you can play it on regular guitar an octave up uh, from this. The uh, If you have a seven string and you tuned your low B string down to A, uh, you could play the same riff uh, on the bottom strings of a seven string. Okay, I'm going to pull the track up and I will show you generally the idea of what I played. Uh, I believe I remember it. Uh, so here's the, the riff. Okay, right. Yeah. Drop A. The main idea of the riff is going to the uh, fifth to the sixth fret on, on the second string. In this case, this is an E string. And then open straight across the third. And then first fret to open on the second string, on the E string. So that's uh, starting on the second string, one open, three open on the low string, and then one, three open from the first string down. All right, and one of the variations that I, I do, uh, I think, quite a bit in there is uh, instead of ending the riff on that A note, I go and play that C sharp, which is a the third of the A, so it'll go. Um, and then the, you know, the, the second part is just that open A power chord going up to a little, you know, B flat back. Uh, but the main riff. That's it. So there you have it. Um, six different tracks for now. I'm sure there's going to be more on the way. PRS uh, will be probably posting more before too long. Uh, I'm going to be recording a ton down here and posting a bunch of uh, jam tracks, both on my YouTube. I'm going to set up a band camp where you can go and download the, the audio of these also, uh, or other ones that I'll be doing. I'll be posting a ton of tutorials and lessons, both related to jam tracks and otherwise. Uh, so please subscribe. Hopefully you got something out of this. I can't wait to hear what you all put to these tracks. Uh, be sure to use the hashtag so I can find them and hear them. Um, put a comment if, if you have any ideas of some keys, chord progressions, genre styles, anything that you uh, would like to hear a backing track recorded. And I'll play some um, more in-depth playthroughs on, on these and whatever new ones I post. And I'll do some tutorials where I walk through exactly what I'm playing, maybe possibly tab out some certain ones. Um, I've had a lot of questions about some of the intro and outro jams that I've done on the PRS uh, demo videos. So maybe I'll go back and revisit some of those um, in more of a lesson kind of format, talk about those. So uh, anything that you want to talk about or learn about, make a comment and I'll see what I can do. And I uh, hope to see you around out there on the internet. Thank you.